Good afternoon, class. I still maintain my name as Sharif Amin Ibrahim. This afternoon, we are going to discuss approaches to the study of public administration. We have first, second contact previously, and today being our third contact, we now briefly or quickly have a glance at the approaches to the study of public administration. Over the last few decades, no national government has been able to put the public sector into good working order. Power has been heavily concentrated at the center. Other tiers of government were left to suffer before they could get approval from central government was a large proceed. The traditional institution or the traditional system of administration that was already in place could not cater for some other key areas of governance. All this posed a great problem and brought about the emergence of approach to the study of historical public administration. So in our previous discussion, we have discussed how public administration came to be because we have a kind of the center that is bestowed with a huge sum of responsibility could not be able to cater for other tiers of administration. So for this reason, that is why we have a kind of decentralization policy in our administrative system. So let us move on briefly to see what uh, we can be able to tap in the approaches of the study. The aim of this study session is to explore the various approaches to the study of public administration, namely historical approach, the judicial approach, or legal approach, and scientific approach. This approach studied the past system of public administration with a particular time span organizing and interpreting the information in chronological order. This approach is very unique in nature because it presents historical development of events of a particular nature, public service and administration. So the essence of there could be no record if there is no history. So the essence of this historical approach of public administration, that is why we do have what is called comparative public administration. You compare the administration just like the, what the study is trying to tell us. Other nations' public administration system is being probably borrowed or brought for us to copy to see how their system of ad their administrative system is being operated. If you are very mindful that we are being colonized by the British, so it is the British system of administration that is being into play here. The origin of civil service in Nigeria is traced to the administration of Lord Lugard, who was governor general and head of administration. At the time of amalgamation of the northern and southern protectorates in 1914, the next is Charles Clifford, the nucleus of the civil service. He, he is called the nucleus, like the engine room of the civil service. Clifford succeeded the Lugard administration in 1921 with the establishment of Central Secretariat in Lagos for administration practice. The judicial of legal approach, public administration was considered to be a part of law concentrating on legally prescribed structure and organization of public authorities. Just like has been as it has been said in our subsequent discussion, public administration checkmates a lot of problems and it has what is called sanity in administration. There is unity of command and control. There is span of control. There is division of labor in public administration. That is why it requires planning, organizing, staffing, coordinating, budgeting, and auditing. So 
Public administration was considered to be a part of law concentrating on legally prescribed structure and organization of public authorities. This approach was formed when the activities of the state were narrowly limited and simple in nature. The legal of jurisdiction, I mean juristic method, is mostly used in France, Germany, and Belgium, which have a large traditional administrative law. The administrative law is an important branch of public law and it inculcates the organization and functions of public authorities and with the problems of their correlation, powers and responsibility. Public administration is considered to be a part of administrative law and as such it is studied as a legal framework. That is why public administration can be, can be said it is even a field of research. There is no place that we do not have administration in our homes, in our offices, organization, in the military, everywhere there is administration. So the structural approach, the approach was among the oldest and policies are clearly separated from administration. The belief is that the major role of the administrator is to implement the government policies. The approach glanced at public administration as an academic field of study because it covers the political, it also concerns with the distribution of powers among the levels of government, federal, state, and local government in question. Public accountability and planning of local government administration, it analyzes organizational structures and constituted authorities and responsibilities of the three organs of government. As has been said, the federal, state and local government. The behavioral approach, this type of approach means the collective examination by studying individual or human behavior in administrative situation. So you can see the application of the study of behavior in an organization itself is very important. So as to have good or efficient productivity in the system. This type of approach means the collective examination by the studying, by studying individual or human behavior in administrative situation. This approach focuses on the actual behavior of persons and groups in organization. The scientific approach. Public administration, like any other social sciences, make use of the in inductive method of proceeding from particular to general from simple to abstract, from known to, un to unknown, from concrete to difficult, from simple to concrete and from known to unknown through observation for collecting data. So class, in a nutshell, these are the historical background of public administration through the use of various approaches. Now my question here for you to you to have an assignment explaining your understanding the histor historical approach. It's called the judicial or legal approach. In our next lesson, we move on to session four. Thank you.